Good afternoon. Welcome to this episode of New York State's Office for the Aging Ask the Expert, the Nutrition Edition. My name is Elizabeth Irish. I'm a registered dietitian with the New York State Office of the Aging and the New York State SNAP-Ed Program Coordinator for Older Adults. Today on Ask the Experts, we're gonna talk about farmer's markets in New York State. I have two experts with me today. I have Drew Cohen, who's a registered dietitian and one of my colleagues at the New York State Office for the Aging, and Carrie Skelton, who is also a registered dietitian and the SNAP-Ed coordinate, the SNAP-Ed nutrition educator for the Chautauqua region. Before we get started, I wanna share a few fun facts about the New York State farms and farmers markets. Based on the 2017 census, farms make up 23% of the total New York State area. And New York State is second in the nation for the production of pumpkins and apples. I didn't know about the pumpkins part. Third in the nation for cabbage and cauliflower. And fourth in the nation for tart cherries fresh market corn, squash, and pears. Some of that was new information for me and I know a lot about food. There are more than 400 farmer's markets in New York State and there are 250 farm stands and 10 mobile markets. New York State farms and farmer's markets are pretty amazing and it's a great time of year to be talking about this. In fact, this week is farmer's markets week in New York State. If any of you are watching today that have questions during our discussion, you can put your questions in the chat box. We're only gonna be addressing general questions today, but if you have individual questions, we'll try to address them later in a different way. So someone is monitoring the chat box, so you know, don't be worried, we are, we are seeing your questions. Druid, can you start us off today by telling us about your connection to the New York State Farmers Markets? Okay, sure, thank you. Um, and thank you for inviting me here and giving me this opportunity to talk with you about it today. Um, and as you had mentioned, it is the um, National Farmers Market Week. So I at New York State Office for the Aging. I'm one of the dietitians similar to Liz Best's position. Um, and I've been here about seven years. And in the last probably about four years, I've been tasked with helping to implement the Senior Farmers Market Nutrition Program. And so I'll be talking and showing a, uh, some slides shortly on that. Great. Can we have the first slide? There we go. All righty. Um, thank you very much. Uh, Roger is going to be advancing the slides for me, and I think we're all set. Okay. Um, so it's the Senior Farmers Market Nutrition Program that I'm discussing today and giving you an overview of what the program is. <clears throat> so the program itself is um, put on by uh, Ag and Markets and it's funded by federal money and uh, state money as well. Um, participants are given coupons to purchase food from farmers. And the goal of the program is for farmers as well as for the participants. So to promote the local farmers and their produce and also to foster healthy communities through the consumption of locally grown fresh fruits and vegetables. So Carrie's here and she's doing um, some more information with regards to the SNAP education uh, messaging and buying and eating foods from local farmers markets certainly aligns with the intent of the SNAP messaging and what the goals are with SNAP as well. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that in a little bit. You can advance the slide, please. So the program is a collaboration. Uh, it's with New York State Department of Agriculture and Markets, 
So they contacted the uh, NYSOFA, New York State Office for the Aging, and asked to pair up with them so that we could help get farmers market coupons out to the older participants in New York State. And along with that, New York State Department of Agriculture and Markets also works with the Department of Health. That's more for the side of their program where they give coupons out to um, WIC, women, infants, and children. And then also the program is um, collaborating with Cornell Cooperative Extension too, because they help provide nutrition education around New York State. And as I had mentioned a few minutes ago, it is uh, federal and state funding um, that helps make this uh, possible for older New Yorkers. As far as who's eligible, the eligibility guidelines are dictated by the federal government, and it would be someone who is 60 years old or older, and that they meet the requirements for the low to be low income. Now, this is the gross monthly income at or below 185. This is updated every year. So each year um, we have to put out new information as to what would that be for the 185% um, or below the income guidelines. And as far as it goes at the local level with the area agencies on aging, they have charts and they're able to look at what someone's income is and help the older adult determine whether they are eligible or not. And then once they are deemed eligible, thank you, Roger, you're okay. Um, they're provided with a, a booklet of coupons and the booklet contains five coupons, which are $5 each this year. So for a total value of $25, so that's $25 that the participant can go to farmers markets that are um, that are participating in this program. They help, the farmer has to go to agriculture and markets and fill out some information. So it's not every market that's out there, it's the ones that are participating in the program. So the participant can then take their $25 coupon booklet and use that to purchase um, fruits and vegetables at the market. And then in a little bit, we'll talk about what kinds of things they would be able to buy. Next slide. This is a sample of what the coupon looks like. Every year it's a different color and that helps to um, let someone know at a glance that those coupons are only for that year and that it's a new color the next year. It also has the date on it. It says what each coupon is um, valued at. And then you'll see there's a QR code on it. And so participants can actually check that QR code and it brings them to some more information about healthy recipes. And I believe it brings them to the Ag and Markets um, website. So the front of it is information that a participant would want to know. And then the back of it is information for the farmer. And like I said, it's changed every year. And this year they were $5 each and five total in a booklet, which came to $25 that people could use. Sure would. Do you mind, yeah. if, do you mind if I um, make two little comments? The um, no, QR ahead. code, when we passed our um, coupon booklets out this year, the QR code was um, well received. It was also an educational opportunity for many of uh, mm -hmm. those recipients. And um, but really, it, what a great place for the recipient to constantly check and see who is accepting these coupons because they're always updating the list because if you know of any any of you out there listening out in the virtual world there uh, if you're listening mm -hmm. and you know of a grower who um isn't on the list and who isn't currently accepting these coupons they can contact ag and markets and get on the list and so the qr code is very very helpful and therefore um there's a constant update of who's being um, who's using and accepting these coupons. That is a great point. Thank you. Um, they're really happy to have started that. I believe this is one of the first year or one of the first years that they're using that as an option. So that's wonderful. Glad to hear the feedback. All right, I think we can move to the next slide. So the program dates, um, it runs from July 1st through November 30th. 
So November 30th would be the last day that anyone can use their coupons at a market. Uh, one other thing I like to uh, caution people about towards the end of the season is just that you want to make sure the markets are still open, that they're still um, providing their fruits and vegetables at the times that they had anticipated. Sometimes it gets a little bit less and things change towards the end of the season, but you'll want to make sure that you uh, check first before going when it gets to the end. Okay, next slide. All right, so now people have the coupons in hand, where can they use them? It depends on the, um, the local area agency on aging, or sorry, where can you get the coupons? It depends um, where they do their distribution events. And Carrie in a minute is gonna talk a little bit about that. Um, so that would be things like senior centers, congregate meal sites. Some will go to a farmer's market and distribute coupons there. Um, also some housing complex. Uh, complexes will have people come in and do distribution events. I'm trying to think home delivered meal participants. There's ways that we can get the coupons to them as well. So depending on the um, area you're in, it varies. And usually it's up on websites of the area agency on aging, or they put communications in newspapers to let you know. Mm -hmm. And then Carrie, do you want to talk about that now or just kind of catch it later in the conversation about what your county does? Oh, I can talk about it now. So our county, yes, <laughs> our county is, um, I think we do a fantastic job of getting the coupons that we are tasked with um, distributing throughout our county um, out into the hands of those um, who may be um, considered the most vulnerable, most in need. Um, we work with primarily our housing units first, our case managed AAA clients and our home delivered meal clients. And we get a list of clients who are interested and we um, kind of work with the resident coordinators at the housing units to pre-register, right? To get a list of those interested. And um, then we have distribution events I, I'm super excited about our, our distribution event this year at the housing units. We did a cooperative effort with, in partnership with Cornell Cooperative Extension Master Gardener um, Volunteers. Uh, we also kind of combined this program, the Senior Farmers Market Program, along with our um, SNAP Ed Container Garden Program. So every person signed up to get a Senior Farmers Market coupon also got a little windowsill herb kit that they could grow. And in order for them to be successful at growing this, our mm -hmm. Master Gardener volunteers helped them to pot it up, answer questions about watering, answering questions about um, lighting and then harvesting it. And then I was there with some uh, food demo and taste testing and recipes to talk about how to use those container gardens um, as well as any of the produce that they um, were able to get through the Senior Farmers Market Nutrition Program. Wow, that's like a one-stop shopping. It was a one-stop <laughs> shop. It was fantastic. Such great feedback. And um, really, um, we were also able at that same time to answer a lot of those questions and do the education with the QR codes that were new this year and um, answer questions about um, any of our public distributions, you know, say they had a friend that didn't live in the housing unit. So how could they access the senior farmers market nutrition programs? And so um, whatever the, the number of coupon packets that were sent to our county, um, we tried to get most of those kind of through pre-registration and then the remainder we um, worked with our local farmers markets and did a public distribution where we advertised and said, hey, come out to the farmer's market because then they could use them that very same day uh, that they were receiving the, um, the, the coupons. So we do have a question for you, Drew. And thank you, Carrie. That really gave people a good idea of mm -hmm. you know, how this all works. And every county is different. But you guys, Chautauqua always shines in how they do things. You know, you really do a great job there. 
Someone wants to know, Druid, if you can get coupons in Queens, New York. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can, you can still get coupons. They would just have to contact the Department um, for Aging, DIFTA, and ask where the most, um, the closest one would be for them as far as distribution sites. Right. And um, I believe that we have some links. Um, one of them is for uh, DIFTA and New York Connects. And so that link would get you to uh, more information. And um, so I'm seeing that, is it available in different counties? It's available every county. Right. So um, the question came in, is it available in Kings County? Is it available in Queens County? It's available everywhere throughout New York State. So um, the area agencies on aging are given a certain amount, and then they disperse them up and through up through the end of um, September. So if you find that there's none in the place where you're going to get them, you can get them from another county, you can get them from another distribution event. You just have to find out what's happening in your community for distribution events. And then, um, like I said, if you don't get one in your county, it's okay because you just have to say that you attest that that's the only place you're gonna get them is that one time. It may not be right in the county you live in. Maybe they've already dispersed theirs and they're waiting for their second allocation. So yes, you can still get them. Every county has them available. They, you know, they will have them available till they run out of their first. It's a first come first serve basis. So mm -hmm. anybody who wants one, you can't um, reserve any of them for someone. You have to go in and get them, you know, as a first come first serve. Some AAAs, area agencies on aging, um, if they are in a lag of waiting for their second allocation, their second group of coupons, they can make a wait list However, you know, you can't reserve someone that you have sitting on your desk and, you know, put them for somebody in particular. Yeah. Carrie, can you explain the QR code? Um, I know that can be a little confusing and I'm sure you've explained it to many people what it is and what you do with it. Yes. So the QR code is just a digital link to um, information, right? It's um, like a we type into our computer a URL or a address, right, if we're going somewhere. But the QR codes are really great because, well, they're everywhere now, right? They're on um, food boxes, they're um, hanging up at um, restaurants to tell you what their menu is. Uh, they're everywhere. And so it's giving you a link to some sort of information or education. Um, our county loves QR codes for, <laughs> for that reason, right? But you need your phone. Mm -hmm. um, what you're going to do then is take, if you have an iPhone, I believe there's a setting there. I don't have an iPhone, but if you have an iPhone, you take your, um, there's a setting that if you just click on the camera, and hover it over top of the QR code, it scans it, and then it'll pop up, do you wanna to go to this link or open in browser or something along those lines, you click on that and it takes you to the information. If you have an Android kind of device, and it doesn't have to be a phone, it could be a tablet or um, some other kind of mobile device that has a camera, it has to have that camera. And the Android then allows you to download an app from like the Google Play Store or whatever app store you're working with. And it's a free app. Um, and then you just, um, again, download the app anytime you need to down. That's what I have to do. So then I go to my little app. Anytime I see a QR code, click on the app, hover it over top because it opens up the camera and it scans and takes you to the information. Yeah, it's kind of like um, the link idea, you know, when you click on a link, but this you're taking a picture of something that takes you to the place you want to go, the information. I know when I first tried QR codes, uh, you know, it confused me. They've been around a long time, but they're really gaining a lot of popularity. That makes sense why they would. Yeah. So let's see. A lot of our questions are about where you can get coupons, and I think Drew did a great job at explaining that. Um, Thank you. And like I said, it can be put into the chat box, and since I'm not seeing what's in the chat, um, as far as a link goes, 
Um, there was the one link that was in um, for DIFTA, so the Department yeah. of Aging in New York City. So that would be very helpful to look for that one. Mm -hmm. And anybody can call New York Connects yes. for, mm -hmm. and it will direct them to their counties, um, their, wherever your region is, wherever you're living. If you call New York Connects, you will get directed to your local um, agency and they can direct you as to how and when uh, they're doing their public distributions. Like I said, we um, we were able to work with um, our housing units and do some public distributions. And our first allocation is uh, gone and we're kind of just waiting in limbo um, for uh, that second distribution, that second wave of distribution. So that may be the case in many of the other counties um, throughout New York State. But like you said, if if your county is out, it's possible to go to a different county or maybe the place you usually go for your coupons is, doesn't have them anymore. You might go to another site to get them. Um, so there are other ways. And those other area agencies on aging, we always call them triple A's, but that's what it stands for, mm -hmm. area A agency on aging. And they can help you, you know, figure out in a particular county where those distribution sites would be. That makes sense, hopefully. Okay, well, I'll let Joy go back to explaining some things because I think we addressed right. most of the questions in the chat. Thank you, yeah, I think there's been some good questions coming in. Um, <clears throat> so the, um, I think there's a question about the income limits and uh, as I had mentioned earlier, it is a certain, you know, one, you have to be 185% um, or below uh, the federal poverty guidelines. And again, that comes out every year. And so it changes a little bit. I don't have the numbers committed to memory right now, what it would be, but they go through and do one family. If it's one person in your household, it's a certain monthly income. If it's two people in your household, certain but it looks like Carrie's ready to tell me all those numbers <laughs> I will so, <laughs> so a household size of one is below I want to say this year's number was 2086 and 2096 house, or something yes yeah. yeah so I mean don't quote me but it's right around that that number below you have to be below it and then um a household size of two was somewhere around 28 something um, maybe 28, 36 or something along those lines. So again, don't quote me on the exact, but that gives you a ballpark. We can um, put the chart on our Facebook page. In fact, I think mm -hmm. we put it on um, a post that um, maybe that we did last week or this earlier this week, but we can yeah. put that information on this Facebook page so that people right, can wonderful. review it. Yes, you okay. can, if you get the coupons in one county, you can use them at any ag and market uh, that accepts the coupons across the state. Yeah. Yes, that's true. Well, we'll let Druid finish up on it really helps you figure out the small picture sometimes. Yeah, so some of these questions that were just asked about, can you get the fruits and vegetables from a different county, leads into the next um, slide that I have here of, uh, you know, where uh, can could the coupons be used? Mm -hmm. And here's a picture that shows you the different places. An example of each of the places, there's traditional farmers markets, there's farm stands, and there's mobile markets. Now there's technical definitions of what each of these are <laughs> as far as ag and markets goes, agriculture and markets goes, um, when the person, the farmer is asking to be part of the program, um, they have to do specific things and be um, meeting some criteria. But a traditional farmer's market for the most part is just more, two or more farmers set up in a place. And you'll see that there's usually a lot of different farmers there, a lot of different um, produce, that you can get and um, is generally in the same in one place and that's where you would go. Um, for a farm stand, that's the picture here in the middle of the um, slide. 
and that is a single vendor. So that's only one farmer usually that has the uh, farm stand and it is in that spot and doesn't generally move. So when you look at a mobile market, that is usually one vendor as well, but their produce is in a truck or a van and they go around the community to different places. Now, they don't do it willy-nilly. They do have a setup system of where they're going to be and when they're going to be there. So mm -hmm. those are the various places that you can use the coupons. Uh, again, the traditional markets have probably more vendors, have to have two or more vendors. Um, and then the farm stands, you see those on the side of the road from you know just one vendor generally, and then mobile markets, ones that go around the community, but they do have a routine. So you would probably know next week they'll be at, you know, a certain place at two o'clock. The next week they'll be at that same place at two o'clock. And those are the types of places that the coupon can be used. And then also, as Carrie was talking about, that it has to be a person who's decided to participate and they should have a sign up saying that they participate in the program. And so you can't just bring your coupons to any market and say that they must accept your the coupons. It has to be something that they are saying that they accept the coupons. Right. I also want to throw out there that um, the coupons, because they are in five dollar increments, mm -hmm. you want to be sure of what your prices are. So if you go to a traditional farmers market, for example, you, you want to take a loop around, walk around, because each of the different farm that are selling their produce may have different prices for their blueberries or for their right. cucumbers. So mm -hmm. take a loop around and see what's what and mm -hmm. um, know your prices before you're buying. Um, then if say you're going to spend six or $7, great. Just know that you're not going to get any money back. You're not gonna wanna right. give two $5 coupons to the vendor uh, for $7 worth of produce. So have either a couple extra bucks or use your SNAP EBT right. card. At the traditional farm stands, your farm, uh, sorry, farmer's markets, your farm stands are probably not going to accept um, your SNAP benefits. But at the traditional farmer's markets, oftentimes if you go to the head of the farmer's market at the entry point, you can say, hey, I'm going to use $1 off of my SNAP EBT card. So yeah. say you went, walked around, did your loop, you've got $7 worth of produce you want to buy, you're going to use $5, one $5 coupon. Now you've got two bucks that you need to ante up, right? With your um, SNAP benefit, just ask for $1 for it at the markets that you double up for the bucks because they'll give you two coins, two tokens. If you, you swipe your EBT card, all they'll do is take $1 off of your balance, but you get to spend $2 worth of produce. Um, so it's great um, partnership between, um, and really a great way of stretching your budget um, at the farmer's markets to get access to your produce. Yes, I've seen that. We have a local um, farmer's market where they give you these little wooden tokens and people with SNAP and the EBT cards, like you said, they get, you know, I might use my credit card to get a token, but I only get, you know, what I paid for, but a person with EBT benefits will get twice as much as I do. Now, the double up box are only for a short season. Yes. It's a shorter season than the, se the senior farmer's market coupons. Those go July. You can use utilize their, your senior farmer's market coupons July 1 to November 30th. The double up box program is only from, I want to say, July 1, mm -hmm. not June 1, July 1 uh, through sometime in September. It's just a shorter amount of time that you can do double up box using your SNAP EBT. So just some um, savvy yeah. budget saving tips. Well, that's um, important. And, and I do exactly what you said. I go, I do the whole loop and then I go back to the one that's the best buy. You know, quality is part of the picture too, but I generally, we have a favorite one that's a little cheaper than the rest of them. 
So you just want to, if though there was a question that said, is this true? And it certainly is. This is the program that um, the farmers markets run. You just want to get to the right booth. Yes. You just got to find that booth that where usually, they are running your SNAP EBT cards. They're usually in the front. Like. And just a plug, if you have not signed up or applied for SNAP benefits, absolutely yes. try to make that do get that application call new york connects if you need assistance but it's on mybenefits.gov website um so maybe roger you can throw that link in there um mybenefits.gov is the place to go to sign up for snap and the income limits some people say oh i couldn't possibly be qualified but you'd be surprised, you know, the income limits are the same as the senior farmers market coupon program, that 185th percentile level. So um, absolutely, this is another great way to stretch your um, budget and your dollars um, and have greater access to those fruits and vegetables. Yeah. And Carrie, you were talking about the double up bucks, but there's also fresh connect checks right mm -hmm. so that's another program so fresh connect you would get five dollars of your snap benefits gives you two extra dollars to spend at the farmer's market i believe is and that i am not completely familiar with that but that is another snap ed program that's only run in certain regions right and there is another snap ed program that's called fruit and veg rx yeah now that's where you get a doctor's prescription um, again, it's only run in certain regions. I know uh, we have some providers in our region that are a part of this program. If you get a doctor's prescription, the Fruit and Veg RX allows you $4 per week for 16 weeks to be spent um, on produce at your farmer's markets. Um, so lots of different programs out there to access, have better access to fruits and vegetables. And why do we want to talk about access to fruits and vegetables? <laughs> Seven of the 10 leading chronic diseases are contributed to nutrition, right? So, yep. and, and we know that fruits and vegetables help us to prevent and maintain our chronic diseases, prevent and maintain weight um, maintenance. And the average older adult, over the age of 60 only consumes one serving of fruits and vegetables a day when, and we know that this is statistics, this is evidence-based research, one serving of fruits and vegetables per day. What's a serving, Carrie? I so think a, a lot serving, of people get confused a, about that. So a serving is about a half a cup for any of our fruits, any of our vegetables, whether it's canned fruit, fresh fruit, um, frozen vegetables, fresh, fresh vegetables, half a cup. If it's lettuce or salad, it's one cup, right? So we need five to nine servings a day of fruits and vegetables. Um, one serving is nowhere close to the recommended. And so with SnapEd and, and MyPlate.gov, we want to encourage you to make half of your plate fruits and vegetables every meal. We don't eat on pyramid, right? But when we look at a plate, we eat meal by meal, plate by plate. And every time you eat snack, dinner, think about your dinner last night. Think about your plate. Was half of it fruits and vegetables? Mm. You know what I do? Sometimes. I'm trying to remember last night. If yeah. I forget what I, if I didn't eat half my plate fruit and vegetables, sometimes, sometimes I have it as a snack because I know I didn't do it at my meal. I say, oh, I was missing that. So I got to go back and have that as a snack, a fruit or a vegetable or both. Yeah. And when we eat half of our plate from fruits and vegetables, we know that we are generally eating and drinking less sodium, less saturated fats, and less added sugars in our diets because we're not adding a ton of processed foods and a lots of extra butters and gravies and creams and um, sugars to our foods. If you're eating fruits and vegetables and just enjoying that fresh flavor, right? 
Um, yeah. You're getting half of your plate from fruits and vegetables. You're eating and drinking less sodium, saturated fats, and added sugars. You're reducing your risk of chronic disease. You're and also so making that's the yeah. whole point of our farmers markets. It's the whole point of all these various fruits and vegetable programs to get it into the hands of the older adults who are not accessing fruits and vegetables. And one of the biggest the biggest reasons we see that our older adults are not getting enough fruits and vegetables is because your household size has gone down. You're no longer cooking for an army, right? You're cooking for one person. And so then you get to the grocery store, the farmer's markets, we don't have this problem at, right? You get to the grocery store and you have huge family bags of apples or oranges. And you're going to take that home and say, oh, it's just going to go to waste. So what do you do? You walk right on past it and you don't purchase that. This is the reason, this is part of the reason why our older adults are not getting the recommended five servings per day, right? They're not buying it because they're afraid it's going to go to waste. So there are ways that we can avoid that. And there are programs and information, lots of information out there. Call New York Connects and ask for um, your local SNAP Ed programs and your nutrition educators like myself can help guide you through those kind of processes um, to, to be able to cook smaller meals for one or two to help make sure you're not having as much food waste and getting those fresh produce. But I keep talking. It's back to you. Putting in the New York Connect telephone number into the chat um, yeah. because some yeah. people don't have computers and they'll want to get the 1-800 number. Um, I believe it's 1-800-342-9871. I looked that up, so I'm pretty sure that is the number. Um, and Roger, who's checking the chat box, can make sure that we get a proper number in there, but that's the number that I have. So calling New York Connects, um, like Carrie was just talking about. All right. So really what you were talking about is, you know, making sure that people do uh, have access to the fruits and vegetables and do figure out what meals they can have that they can um, do without feeling like they're going to waste. Because I know I came from the time where I'm always on my family about don't waste that, don't waste that. You know, we need to use that and repurpose everything. Um, and I can see that now with only having looking at having one child home soon um, in the fall rather than three, you do have to start looking at what are we going to do differently so that we don't go wasting things. Um, yeah. Okay. So uh, as far as what is um, eligible that you can get at the farmer's markets, mm -hmm. that's the next slide. That's important to know. Okay. So if you take a look at this slide, it gives you an idea of what things are going to be um, okay for you to use your coupons to purchase. And the key here is local, 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 local. So you want to make sure that you're getting something that's uh, locally grown. And some examples are some vegetables, cucumbers, potatoes, bok choy, lettuce. So some local grown vegetables. Examples of local fruits, apples, like uh, Elizabeth mentioned in the beginning, um, peaches, berries, and currants. There's more. Um, and we do have a link to a harvest chart that you can be put in the chat box. And that also lets you know what's available at what time of the season. Um, local pumpkins, if they're edible, so you have to be able to eat them. Uh, <laughs> local mushrooms, again, the kind that you would be putting in your meals. And then cut herbs for cooking. So there's some examples here, basil, thyme, and mint. So things that are gonna be ready to go, put in your food and use it. Um, not things that you have to really do a lot of um, processing to. And then the next slide talks a little bit about the ineligible things. So there's going to be all kinds of things at the farmer's market because they're not just catering to people that have the coupons. So they're going to have a bunch of things. So you have to look at what is there that you can have and what are the things that you can. Now, like Carrie mentioned, you know, if you have some of your own money that you're bringing, figuring that you want a certain thing, that would be a separate purchase. You know, if you wanted to buy something else, you just couldn't use the coupons to do it, but you certainly can um, buy other things, but just not with the coupons. So some ineligible things would be bananas. Those aren't grown locally. Um, oranges, avocados, things of that nature that you don't get here in New York State. Um, 
um, painted off, or there are things like the gourds or corn, things that you're just putting out for fall season as a decoration. You can't buy things like that. Um, potted plants, potted herbs, and then cut flowers. Again, those are things that you're not going to bring home and be consuming those as part of your fruits and vegetables. And then there's one more slide of ineligible items. And this is speaking to things that have to be processed, like baked goods. You know, you may have zucchini in the zucchini bread, but for your coupon purposes, you know, that's not allowed. You can go home and make zucchini bread <laughs> with the zucchini that you might purchase at the farmer's market. Um, some more things here on the list that are the ineligible ones would be ciders, juice, eggs, meats, dairy products, jam, honey, and maple syrup. So those are some other things that you often see at farmer's markets, and that's certainly all right, uh, but it's a matter of what's eligible and what's ineligible when you're using your coupons. These are items you could use your SNAP benefits for. Right. There Just you go. Just not the coupons. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. I do want to note there was a question we missed in the chat. It said, oh. um, are there any ideas or updates as to why the income limit has been lowered? I just want to um, state that that's not the case that, that the income limits have gone up this year. They were lower last year. So those numbers that we were uh, reviewing with you, household size of one around 20, you know, 2086, somewhere in that region, that's up from last year. It was like 19 something last year. Right. So we don't know what the income guideline someone was looking at or what the source mm -hmm. of that was, but we just do know what it is for this year. And uh, it is up, you know, it goes, it's generally, that's the case. So. Mm -hmm. All right. So that was the end of my slides on a general overview of the farmer's market uh, nutrition program. And so as we've been doing questions so far, I'm going to certainly uh, answer any other questions that come through. I had a couple questions, Druid. Sometimes people assume because they get SNAP that they don't have to, um, they should get the coupons automatically, that they don't have to, you know, go through any mechanisms to get them, but that's not really the case, right? Right. You still have to do this on your own, decide that you want them, um, be 60 or older and, you know, find the area agency on aging and um, see if you qualify. And the um, SNAP is an entitlement program and the Senior Farmers Market Nutrition Program is not an entitlement program. So there's only so much funding, you know, that is being allotted to it. So it doesn't a matter of who's going to um, decide that they want to take, um, you know, take that option. And it's a first come first serve again. So yeah. there's only so much funding that there is um, provided for it. I think you answered my other questions. You did such a great job between you and Carrie of the questions I had. <laughs> oh, okay. So Carrie, do you have other things that you'd like to share with us about the farmer's markets in your area or some of the programming you're doing? Anything in particular? Well, I shared how we did our some of our distribution events just to um, uh, get some more information out about how to use your produce. But one of the other programs that our county is um, doing, we call it Local Roots, um, R-O-O-T-S, um, but a play on words um, as well, because you know we have roots and roadways <laughs> all over. Um, and so we want, and, and so it comes back to produce and access, right? We want to have everybody make it as easy as possible to make produce accessible to those who um, are, are need it. And we all do, you know, the recommendation is five or more a day. So um, we have expanded our local roots program. It's a 10 week program. We partner with a local grower. And um, during our pilot, year we are you know this is our third pilot year next year um we're really going to be stretching into our sustainable years as far as um cost share and accepting um snap benefits for um this program but while it's a program it is currently 
free to our recipients and um, we're at our cap this year. Um, we're doing 300 um, produce bags throughout Chautauqua County um, between our case managed clients, our home delivered clients, and just um, some uh, public kind of distributions at various sites and housing units. That's that's new this year too. So the home delivered meals, the um, housing units, they are new add-ons this year where we're taking produce, we're partnering with um, a grower, Abers Acres, and we're partnering with um, our local mobile market. And they are able to do, because they're mobile, they're able to provide some transportation and get this produce into the hands of older adults. And each week for 10 weeks, it's a whatever the grower has. So this past week we had Swiss chard. And um, many of the people said, oh, no, I, I don't want that. And we still know you have you need to take this and try it and hear our recipes and tell me next week what it. Tasty for them to kind of experiment uh, with something new and exciting in the kitchen. Um, that's always fun for me. Uh, the experimentation part. Oh, so yeah, we are having a lot of fun with that. And what we're really excited about um, is that we have a new NOAP coordinator. And I'm not sure if you're familiar with NOAP, but that's Nutrition Outreach Education Program Coordinator, NOAP. And they are a SNAP um, staff, essentially. Um, they help people apply for SNAP. So if you're not savvy on the computer, you don't have access to the internet, you can't go to mybenefits.gov and apply for SNAP, this one person in your county, every county has this NOAP coordinator. Um, and so if you don't know who your NOAP coordinator is, call New York Connects and they can help direct you there. But that NOAP coordinator does home visits and can help do the application process and walk you through that application process to get you on SNAP. So we have at some of our um, local roots distributions, our, the NOAP coordinator is coming out and partnering with us to help get our um, local residents enrolled in SNAP and getting them to understand the benefit of um, being a SNAP recipient. That's great. Yeah, you make use of so many partners when you're connected with your farmer's markets. Well, I'm not going to reinvent the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we have um, SNAP-Ed has right now seven regions and Carrie is in one of them. And we have nutrition aid educators all over the state, New York City too, who all have their own little way of doing these programs, but they're available in many, many counties in New York State. So snapad.org, oh, I'm sorry, snapadnewyork.org has a lot of good information. And one of the things they have, if you page down, you'll see New York State Office for the Aging. And if you click on that and you go all the way to the bottom of the page, you'll see um, a calendar with Carrie's workshops that she does and some of the ones the other educators in the state do for older adults, so. But that website, snapedny.org, has a lot of great recipes. Yes. And you can search those recipes by um, an ingredient, right? Yes. So if you know you picked up Swiss chard at the, <laughs> that. Right? <laughs> and you want to know what to do with it, yep. well, you yep. go to that website. Um, foodhero.org is another great yep. that you're seeing. Um, don't be afraid to try something new at the farmer's market um, and just go out and get some recipe information. There's a lot of great resources. Oh, tons of recipes. And that website, the snapatnewyork.org, they also have a, um, under resources, I think it says there's a list of tips and there's all these great one-page 
pieces of information. If you want to know more about tomatoes or if you want to know how to freeze your produce, there's some guidelines there. So if you get a lot, you know, too much of something, there's different ways of freezing different produce, you know, so it stays in your freezer, you know, better than I know how many of our listeners out there have gardens of their own. Right. And so uh, this is the time of the year that they start thinking, Oh my, I'm going to have too many tomatoes or too many cucumbers or too many zucchinis. So one, one point I want to let you know is you can use your snap benefits to buy seed. Yes. At any, like, you know, any place that accepts your snap benefits, if they're selling seed packets, you can buy seed mm-hmm. packets with your snap benefits. Then also you, when you're growing and have all of this extra produce, there are great tips for freezing them so that then you have access. Again, yeah. I just I love that word access to your produce year round, not just during the summer months when yeah. it's so prolific, right? I just froze some rosemary that I grew and some um, parsley and I need to freeze some basil because it's going crazy. Mm-hmm. It likes this hot weather. Yeah, definitely, you know, freezing things, you know, sharing them, you know, if you share with somebody, maybe they'll share what they have with you too, you know, so it's a great way to make connections. So our um, uh, moderator um, of the chat box, I think we're giving a shout out to Alex, Alex Hyatt here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So he is um, feeding us our questions. And one of the other questions is, is there proof of eligibility for the senior farmers market nutrition programs? Um, Druid? Okay. Um, that, so there's a statement of eligibility. It is a form that needs to be filled out. Basically, it's an attestation for the older adult to say that they are 60 or older and that their income meets the guidelines. So that is what needs to be filled out, but no one's asking for you to show any of your income information or even how old you are. It's an attestation to say that you say that you are You know, they could ask you for uh, maybe your driver's license to just show that you are that person, um, but no one's asking really your age or your income. They're just wanting you to attest to it. Yeah, and I think a lot of people, you know, that's great because maybe they're not comfortable with giving specifics, but you can give the general information. Mm-hmm. Speaking of forms, there's another form that if you... Um, are interested in the senior farmers market nutrition program coupons, but, and you want the benefit of the produce, but you're unable to get out to the local farmers markets yourself, but maybe your daughter or niece or neighbor is going to go, um, you will need to sign a proxy form. And this proxy form allows somebody else to use the coupons in your name and then it's attesting again that they're going to bring that produce back to you so that you are able to utilize um, that produce. So the proxy form I find is really important um, only because, and I don't know, Druid, if you're, if this is the, if this is accurate information, but each county is given a certain amount of these coupon booklets based on the usage in their county. So if my county and we handed out a ton of booklets um, and and we saw a a decline compared to the the amount of booklets that we saw several years ago, and I'm sure COVID played a huge role in who used these booklets, right? Who used these coupons over time. Um, But we were given a different distribution number this year than compared to what we're used to. um, And that's just the way it is. But if you know you're not able to utilize your coupons yourself, be sure to get that proxy form signed and be sure to utilize them because then um, it just helps your county receive um, the full amount that it potentially could receive. And again, it's just not unlimited funding. It's just not unlimited. I think... um... As far as uh, how it can go, there's also, if you have a 
um, power of attorney, a power of attorney can go in and sign for a person and get the coupons and use them in the um, farmer's market for them. The difference with the proxy, and that just came out when COVID was um, emerging, was that we found people couldn't get out of their homes. So a proxy was a way for someone to designate a person to pick up the coupons for them. They'd still have to sign the statement of eligibility saying that they are who they are and that they are eligible, but the proxy and they wouldn't have to go outside and then they could also shop for them. So the difference between the proxy, if you've heard of that this you know year in the last two years, is that that person um, can pick up the coupons and they can buy things for the person. They however can't sign the uh, statement of eligibility. That would be just a power of attorney that would be able to do that. So just kind of that's new being that we've never done, pro Edgar Marcus has never done proxies before. Um, so it did help for people that were you know, not able to get out and more nervous about it to be able to um, get the coupons. And uh, there's other ways that coupons can be given depending on the area on agent, area agency on aging. Some have mailed them as well. Um, and so it just depends on how they were doing that. And I feel like a question came in the chat that I wanted to talk about. Um, oh, there was, yeah, I don't. The scam, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know either. Well, we're going to have to wrap it up too because it's only a couple more minutes and we're out of time. This was so much fun. I learned I learned a lot myself and I know our audience did. Thank you so much, Druid and Carrie. You guys are truly experts on farmers markets. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for having me here. Thank yeah, I'm so glad for both, having me. Both, we really appreciate your time and your expertise. Well, thank you all for joining us today on Ask the Expert, the Nutrition Edition. I hope you'll join me next month on September 16th at 1 p.m. when we have a discussion about self-care and nutrition focus. And be sure to check out What's Cooking with My Sofa with Wendy Beckman. Wendy's going to be making a cucumber and berry salad, blueberry salad, on Friday, August 26th, right here on Facebook on our Facebook page. And finally, I want you to let you know that this program is funded by the United States Department for Agriculture and they are an equal opportunity employer. So see you next time. And it's been great talking to you all. Bye. Bye.